Fellow Second Grade, it's Miss Francis, and today we're going to be talking about setting. Where does the book take place? And we've been talking about that before, and we're kind of reviewing it right before summertime. So thinking about where the book takes place, what is the setting of this book? And last year, I don't know if you remember or not, but we read If I Can Build a House, and today we're going to be reading If I Built a Car. So Chris Van Dusen, I love Chris Van Dusen. He writes and he illustrates. He's um, been a Golden Sower winner. He's been a Golden Sower nominated author. So we have a lot of books in the library by Chris Van Dusen. And this actually is my own personal copy here. So I don't have a spine label on this because it's mine. But if we did, it would be in the everybody section. And of course, the first three letters of his last name is V-A-N. So it would be on the V shelf. So maybe next year, you might want to check out a Chris Van Dusen book and maybe you're going to want to check out one of his other books because we have several of his here in the library. So today is If I Built a Car, written and illustrated by Chris Van Dusen. the back seat. Such was that. Mm, this car is okay. This car is not bad, but it's just a car. Nothing great. Nothing grand. It's nothing at all like the car I have planned. I'll work the night to create a design, constantly analyzing, tweak and refine. I'll study jet rockets and look at old planes, contemplate buses and zeppelins and trains to make it as smooth and as sleek as an eel. I'll borrow ideas from the Wienermobile. So sit back, relax, stay right where you are. It's time to reveal my spectacular car. <laughs> and pay close attention to those illustrations too. They tell a story. And there's lots of details in these illustrations. You'll see that I've added a lot of neat things. Flush fender skirts and retractable wings, three headlights up front, four taillights in back, plus two giant fins like our old Cadillac. My brand new design will be curvy and round with special jet engines that don't make a sound. I'll paint up bright colors with accents of chrome and top it all off with a plexiglass dome. I'll build a safe car, just as safe as I can, because safety is job number one in my plan. It may look like steel, from afar you can't tell, but it's actually made of polymer gel, a space age concoction that I just invented. So in a collision, my car will get dented. It simply absorbs what we happen to hit and folks would be fine in the seats where they sit. and I'll show you inside. I put in a couch. It's comfy and wide. Plus a fireplace, fish tank, and here's something cool. The floor can slide open and look, there's a pool.
Now step right this way to the back of the car and note the red button marked instant snack bar. Say you were hungry and wanted a treat. Just press it in instantly. Good things to eat appear in a flash. Anything that you please from hazelnut pudding to aerosol cheese. After you've eaten, you might like a nap. And Robert the Robot makes napping a snap. I build him right into the back of the chair. He's out of the way. You won't know that he's there. But when you get sleepy and rise from your seat, the chair spins around without missing a beat. Robert the Robot will take the controls and he's guaranteed not to hit telephone poles. I see you're impressed with all that's inside. So start up the motor. Let's go for a ride. A car that smells good? Now that's something new. But if I build a car, that's just what I do. Inside the engine, I add a machine to capture the odor of burnt gasoline and change it to something more pleasing to noses, like blueberry muffins or freshly picked roses. Now that we're cruising, let's head to the lake. There's no need to panic or slam on the brake. My car can do something that very few can. The fenders will float like a catamaran. We're skimming the waves and we're having a ball. But wait, hold your horses, cause that isn't all. Boating is fine till we get the urge to dive underwater. Then just hit submerge. Robert will drive as we burble about. We can see catfish and we can see trout. We might even spy the shy sickleback gar from inside our fabulous waterproof car. Last, but not least, the best feature of all comes down to a button that's shiny and small. Push it and then, in a wink of an eye, the car will take off. We'll be up in the sky. We'll fly over land, we'll fly overseas, to Alaska, Nebraska, Bermuda, Belize. Or take a vacation when things start to freeze and fly us all down to the Florida Keys.
My car will be cool. My car will be keen. My car will be one big fantastic machine. The toast of the town. The cream of the crop. The bell of the ball. The tip of the top. My car will be famous from here to Peru. If I build a car, that's just what I do. So boys and girls, think about where this setting of this book took place. It's kind of an interesting setting if you really stop to think about it. And it showed us at the very beginning and at the very end. Refresh your memory. Jack, from the back seat, said to his dad. So of course this all takes place in the back seat of his car. That's the setting of this story, which is kind of an interesting place for a setting. So it's kind of interesting where stories can take place anywhere. Well, we've talked about setting, and now you're going to be a bit creative today because yes, you are going to draw your own car. Yep, we have our tire tracks here. So you are gonna create your own car. You can be as crazy, you can make it as cool, as silly, or you can make it as realistic as possible. This is, of course, a fiction story. And so I want your car to be fiction. And you can make it realistic fiction, so you can make it look real, or you can just go crazy. This is your car. You're going to design it however you want. Boys and girls, I hope you're creative. I hope you have fun. We'll see you all next week. Bye.